Yannick Sinatusov. So it will be the Italian. Ready. To get this one going. Black. Well, I think across the road, they would call that a swing and a miss. <laughs> Strike one. First time playing on Ash this week for Sinner. Did actually get a flavour for it last year, didn't he? In that defeat against Zverev in the round of 16. That one off the line. I mean, you think you're going to be getting a, a look at the volley when you hit a forehand that good. No such luck. This backhand's world class, isn't it? Absolutely. Alcaraz bringing the heat early. We're told that forehand was 104 miles an hour. quality and the match is only three points old it's been a feature of his game ever since he was a youngster hasn't he his desire to get forwards so he enjoys that part of the sport goodness me as he developed some skills and I think a lot of people thought perhaps he's a little cocky when he compared himself more to Roger Federer than uh, likening himself to Rafael Nadal. Which I think is the easy comparison to make simply because he's a Spaniard, but you can see in his game style, he is just so offensively minded, isn't he? Yep. He loves to come in. I mean, in fact, both these guys have come in a lot in the duration of this tournament so far. Ocarez has been in 162 times. That's a lot. 72% success rate. He's not scared to take the second serve from this do side, rip and come in behind it. Oh! Oh! 13. Which yeah. might account for the pressure on that second serve. Totally. Sinner would be well aware of that fact. There were a slightly concerning number of doubles that he dished out when there against Ivashka. Second serve looked quite vulnerable for a period of that match. faults in total, excuse me, 14 double faults in total for Sinner in that match against Ivashka. He was down 3-1 in the fifth before reeling off five straight games. That thought about you know a Federer, Federer type game style. And an adult at a young age wasn't coming in nearly as much as this guy was. Probably not as offensively minded, better defender. So you can you can see what he was trying to say. It's 
found the line off that one. Yes. He likes to hit that backhand return down the line on big points. Did it against Chilich a few times, did it against Brooksby on a number of occasions on big points. So it's going to have to be wary of it. That was a, a good second serve. Better one. Darren Cahill and the Black Hats recently brought on board. give Alcaraz that many opportunities three doubles in the game the Spaniard here's a break so Darren Cahill there of course former semi-finalist at the US Open was killer coach Leighton Hewitt in the early days he's also from Adelaide just like Hewitt Alcaraz trying to break one of Hewitt's records perhaps this week Nick much so he could take over as the world number one or trump hewitt as the youngest ever if he were to do that hewitt at 20 years and eight months currently holds the the record youngest man to ascend to the top carlos Algaraz to serve Alcaraz's first serve points one have been pretty low this week, Rob. Any particular reason for that? I mean, obviously we know the serve is probably the weaker, certainly the weaker side of his game, but he's a good, a good deal down, isn't he? I mean, first he, serve points one this week. He's 10% below all the other quarterfinalists, and that's a lot. He's the only one in the 60s. lower than Francis Tiafa. Tiafa at 76% first serve one. Alcaraz down at 66. So we'll keep an eye on the effectiveness of that shot, how it stacks up against Sinner tonight. So often the cornerstone of a player's game. His agent in the middle, Albert Molina. I saw him chatting whilst Nick and I were having a bite to eat this evening with uh, Carlos's dad, just sitting alone at a table, probably uh, discussing some potential sponsorship deals, whatever's happening. On the financial side of Alcaraz is Alcaraz Inc. It was Molina that first saw him at 11, wasn't it? Got in touch with this guy. Oh. 
Yeah, Alex Kareja tells us his youngest brother's pretty good as well. He's actually 10 years younger than Carlitos. response to the body serve you can see where Sinner was he's actually varied his return position a lot this week Yannick it's quite deep at times but if he's going to stand up there that's not a bad route to take Now, of course, we've been speaking so much. Oh, there's a former champion. Andy Roddick in the house. I love hearing his thoughts on the game. He often puts out uh, ideas that not a lot of other people think of. He's a great thinker, he is Roddick. Despite the fact that he had such a big serve, he was actually a bit of a grind from the back of the court. Very successful businessman now, post his tennis playing days, is Andy. Thirty old. Two thousand and three champion. A lot of people forget he was down match point in the semi final against David Nobandy and he was one point away from going out. himself involved in the game, doesn't he? There's different aspects. He's always got an opinion or two. Legend for service. Of course, he's been good this week, hasn't it? Off the serve, the first serve. Something they've looked to improve over the last couple of seasons. He's taller than what you think is Sinner. And he's up and running in the last of the quarterfinals. It's Alcaraz, Alcaraz with the early advantage. The one thing we've seen from Sinner more of late is him able to express himself a little bit more on a tennis you. court, isn't he? Yeah, he was giving it to the crowd in his previous matches, waving his hands, asking them to get involved. Trying to feed off their energy because he certainly needed it in the Avashka match. Struggling there in the fifth set. was a bit of a wait on this first change of ends. Oh. Oh. 
contagious to that side. First discovered actually by Massimo Sartori, who was the coach of Andrea Seppi. Massimo Players are ready. Thank you. got hold of uh, Riccardo Piatti and he said, I've seen this kid from northern Italy called Yannick Sinner, who is very good. He's raw. He's got enormous amount of potential. Sinner was only playing tennis two or three times a week until the age of 14. He was a champion skier. That was his first love. Yeah, that goes against the modern day mold, doesn't it? In terms of late development. Uh, that's quality of the approach, perhaps just a little shy. And Sinner has made him pay. Now look where this ball bounces. It's not very deep. That gives Sinner time on the ball. He can hit open stance, closed stance, indoors, outdoors. It don't matter. That shot is forged in steel. <laughs> do swore, having to uh, do a quick swerve. That's another shot we're going to have to keep an eye on tonight because in his losses at the Masters 1000 in the summer when he lost to Tommy Paul in Canada and Cam Norrie in Cincinnati, Alcaraz made 48 and four errors in total. Well over half coming from the forehand against Tommy. And 25 in his match against Norrie. It was leaking all kinds of errors. Yes, he hits... Plenty of winners, but too many unforced errors off that four and win cost him ultimately in both those matches. That's a lot of comfort from his corner, doesn't he? In this early part of his career, he's it's up for them for the feedback. Year-old back on level taps. Well, that's one poor one each. Mm -hmm. Do head to usopen.org if you're yet to do so. You can get all your live scoring on there, the highlights, you can get the stats, break it all down. The draws are on there as well. And it is of course the official tournament site, usopen.org. I know, it's, I know it's early doors, but who do you think feels better about the opening four games? I think Sinner right now. Yep. I think he's hitting the ball a little cleaner. He's going to get the second serve under control. This guy has ascended up the ranking so quickly was because of the technical ability of somebody like Ricardo Piatti as a coach, but also, very importantly, and Alcaraz is similar in this department, the ability to practice with so many good players there in uh, Monte Carlo and Bordighera. Beautiful spot, Bordighera. Check it out, it's lovely to stand in the hills. That's where the Piatti Academy is. 
30 minute drive from Monte Carlo. Practicing with Zverev and Djokovic and Raonic and Goffin on a regular basis. You are going to improve so quickly. And of course, that's where Alcaraz has been so lucky as well. And he's had one Carlos Ferreira as a coach, and then he's, he's practicing with Pablo Carreña Busta on a, on a regular basis. And we've got Roberto Bautista Gut. Those guys in that area of Spain, it's invaluable the feedback you get. Hello. Sergio. He's taking a slightly wider position on the serve, doesn't he? On the ad side, and of course, if he doesn't hit the spot, he's a bit vulnerable to that one off the line. Wilson balls are lively, they're light, they're quick. That's what they're dealing with this week. Oh. And of course, unlike some other majors, actually they actually almost get quicker as they get older because they become a little less fluffy. Compare it to the Slazenger ball, for example, at Wimbledon, which after three or four games gets expands almost, doesn't it? Very heavy. Lindsay Vaughn. In, uh, is that one of the players' boxes there? I believe she might be a guest of Yannick's tonight. Okay. Team Sinner. Skiing connection. Anything you see with the second serve, technically, it's a little longer build-up, isn't it? I guess you've got to accelerate a lot to get the spin. You've got to have that thin contact. The worst thing you can do is decelerate, because then you don't impart enough spin on the ball. So it's a little bit of a, an anomaly in tennis. You've got to actually swing harder for more control. Both these guys have got so many skills, haven't they, Nick? That's what's so exciting about watching them play. They've got many different ways of winning points. Screen. It did not miss by much. Seven millimeters, we're told. baseline of a ball like that. It's got the pace, but it's also a lack of recovery time for this guy that's a factor.
Not the first time he's at the foreign return to that spot. That was early. So he got away with the shorter strike. Early on in this game, he ripped one to that same spot nice and deep. Executed the pass to perfection. Oh, how good is this from both players? Good uh, feel. Still a lot that. for Alcaraz to do here. But on the spin, this is sensational. Check this out. All kinds of whip and dip. and was going forward so quickly it was almost like he just yes. couldn't break yeah <laughs> i mean alcaraz's feel on this backhand lob he hit some ridiculous lobs early on in the season so loose with the left wrist that's where all the spin control comes from uh, from those double handers on the backhand side Two of ten, second two of points one. Four doubles in there, though. That's how it's done. Advantage, <laughs> Alcaraz. You just get the feeling he loves his craft, doesn't he? He has been all over that second serve from the very first game, and especially so on the deuce side. And these are the net skills that we were talking about. I feel as though the, the early doubles are inhibiting Sinner a little bit, doesn't it, on the second serve? He's just being a little tentative at the moment. Yes. One of the things I really enjoy about Alcaraz is the fact that even if he gets past at the net, doesn't inhibit him from coming in, does it? Nope. He will still continue to come in. He is so good at recognizing what the right thing to do is. And he just trusts himself that the execution will get better next time around. And even if he gets past, he knows he's done the right thing. And that is a powerful mindset to have. It's not easy to do. of fortune and about the finish though See you now. he had to put on the brakes there didn't he he's in trouble here he's compromised he was early on the swing he's lucky to find a piece of the court there he'll take whatever he can get to get out of this game Yannick Sinner comes through unscathed. Sinner leads three games After a slow start, he's in front. 3 2. No wonder a few people taking their time to get back in their seats. Love 15. Yeah, a healthy Juan Martin Del Potro, I think, would have robbed the big three of a fair few titles. 
to beat Nadal and Federer in back-to-back -back matches to win your first major. It's quite astonishing. And he didn't just beat Nadal in that semi-final. He crushed him. Two, two, and two, if memory serves, two, two, and four, something like that springs to mind. Then, of course, beat Federer from a set down. Two sets to one down, in fact. No, no. Oh, how clever was that? Yeah, I think they were a while cleaning up the craters in the court after he played on here, weren't they? There were so many holes in it. Never intimidated taking them on. Once again, the defense from Sinner so good. Good hand skills from both players. Oh. That's a double-handed slammer. The boys loved it. Fourteen, that's it. From Stace, with a 19-year-old. Just outside of Murthia, as Robbie was saying. urgency here Nick to get to the drop shot as quick as possible to take it at the pinnacle of the bounce this way Senna can be nice and aggressive with that passing shot of course the lower it drops the tougher it is get the feeling he's making a lot more first serves to the juice court versus the air at the moment Into the highest quality. Three games off. First half. Ninety-two mile an hour forehand. The winner, we're told. Knock the fluff off that one. Okay, six games in this battle. Well and truly joined here. One break each. Game on. Oh, come on. How about that? 
A little bit like my forehand back in the day. As it was one Carlos Ferreira who Andy Roddick beat in the final here back in 2003. Let's not forget that. He cranked that one a little harder, did Alcaraz. Almost getting to triple digits, 99 miles an hour. Change of height, distracting the error. So just a little untidy on that one, wasn't he? It's just too many wrist issues in the end for Del Potro, wasn't it? So many wrist surgeries. change of the second hasn't gone out wide too often I've just been reminded of that injury that he suffered at Queens with his knee as well I forgot about that Nick I mean it was so innocuous wasn't it he went down we thought okay looked a little uncomfortable but nothing major he was running after a let call if I remember rightly running forwards Pretty much all she wrote. Fifteen. Fourteen. His second serve is being put under the microscope right now. No, he's only won three Please, out of fourteen. No flash. Thank you. Twenty-one percent success rate. Bonnie has to hit a second serve. That has been true 13, in the last 14. two encounters that they've had. All the break points that Sinner has been able to save when he's played Alcaraz. He saved all nine when they played in Umag, all seven at Wimbledon. Defended his second serve so well in that Umag final. Isn't he? New balls, How please. Early is he taking the return right now? It's another break. Alcaraz back in front. Biggest tennis stadium in the world, of course, by a margin. Seen some things this week. I'm not sure it's seen before either. That was quite week one of the US Open. It really was. Thirty love.
14-11. I remember so very clearly Pat Rafter winning here back in 1998. First final in the Arthur Ashe Arena. Because he won in back to back years, remember? He won 97 as well. Game, Alcaraz. And he used that kind of serve a lot, didn't he? That heavy kicker. Except he wasn't staying back much. Alcaraz, Alcaraz leads five games to three. First set. is a physical trainer in the red shirt there. Juanjo Marena works with Pablo Carina Buster as well. He's had a pretty good summer. Too many better. Creativity. Thy name is Carlos. Those two shots couldn't be any different. Powell driving backhand initial. And then the deft feel with the lob. Great awareness of the space. Beginning to 13. slip away from this man. Has now made the last eight of all four majors. That's pretty impressive for someone so young. It's a third quarter final for Alcaraz. He was coming at the French Open last year. Of course, was a quarter finalist at the US Open 12 months ago. to retire against uh, Felix Auger-Aliassim in that quarterfinal match 12 months ago. Give credit to Alcaraz for making it as difficult as possible. 30, of course, what that will make Sinodou think a little more, won't it, in terms of when he does come in? Uh, he likes it. I mean, that's his agent. He's counting the dollars every time he gives him a vamos. Set point. Some return from the teenager from Spain who has taken an opening set. He leads Yannick Sinner 6 3. <laughs> oh. 
thought that was funny, Albert Molina not letting Juanjo Moreno get out. I think he wants him to stay in the same seat. <laughs> <laughs> Do not move. There we go, first serves in play. First serve points went much better from Alcaraz today. That number is almost, uh, it's almost up 10%, up 9% in fact from, from his average so far for the tournament. So what we don't see there, second serve points one and for Sinner, it's 32%. He's served four double faults. Did defend that serve nearly as well as what he did the previous two times they played. And for me, that was the tipping point in trying to decide who was going to win this one. I just thought Sinner cannot keep defying the odds like he did in Newmark, like he did in Wimbledon, Nick. Yeah. And again, the problem he has off that serve is that he's just kind of looking for the forehand, so he's sitting in the backhand corner and there's some space there. And he knows it. And believe it or not, it is the slightly tougher return to hit. Sinner's baiting him, but Alcaraz is producing the goods nonetheless. Time. Should never be around numbers, you know that, right? Okay. Is this because of this pizza guy you're going to tell me about? <laughs> <laughs> Second set. Alcaraz to serve. Set to the good. And they're looking to become the youngest men's US Open semi finalists since And loading on both the backhand and forehand. How do you live with that? the former top 200 player Noah Rubin has just put out a such a pertinent tweet he said let's close our eyes and hit the hardest ball we possibly can a few inches from the line while simultaneously sliding on a concrete hard court on a non-dominant leg normal that's what these guys are doing just about every single rally. as though it had to be 30, just a little 15. bit better than your standard volley here because of Alcaraz's ability to recover from this position. Absolutely, Nick. But that shouldn't be going anywhere near the service line. It should be very short. In the box, softer hands needed there. A little heavy-handed. That was a big point as well.
4-2-15. Interesting breakdown of the rallies, isn't it? We just had a look at it. Over nine shots have been seven of them today, this evening. Alcaraz has won six of the seven longer rallies. Let for service. Alcaraz. Four in a row. He's on a good tear right First now. Game, second set. What's Sinner telling himself as this change of ends here to potentially wrestle things back his way, do you I, feel? I just think everything's stemming from the serve, Nick. He started the, the match with three double faults in his opening service game. And I think even though he, he got back to two all, got the break back, we saw him at three all, I still think it's it's sitting in his subconscious mind there. There's, there's no doubt about it that it affects the rest of your game. Not nearly as dominant behind his first serve as he has been in his prior matches either. Fifteen love. He's part of the Starwing group. He's Yannick Sinner. Good week for Lawrence. Frank Evans agency, of course, they also represent Karen Hashinoff. Stan Vavrinka in their stable as well, I think. And recently, Denis Shapovalov as well added. That's right. Fifty no. How much of a role does an agent play these days? I mean, clearly, obviously, brokering the deals, but is it more than what else is involved in that? Up and down, looking for new, co new coaches, is that part of the deal as well? Yeah, sometimes. So sometimes it's the player doesn't want to actually make the breakup with the coach and doesn't want to do the, the dirty work and may ask the, the agent to, to do it for him. Let second service. It's a familiar one right now. He's got to try and find a way to get himself out of this situation. All I heard was second four. I think we both know what that means. <laughs> In case you're not sure. I suspect it means go after his second serve fully. It's a much better volley, short, better angle. Thirty-one. 
40 30. Cena. It's more like it. First Four. game in five. One game on, second serve. I think it's fair to say four out of five first serves contributed to the comfortable hold. opened about an hour or so before the night session began. It's been pretty wet here in New York again today at times. Just that logo on Darren's hat is actually Yannick's logo. There's a J in there. There's also an S in there. Is sweet. And it's uh, the face of a fox. That's his nickname. Oh, that's the animal that he's always associated with. The emoji of a fox. A ginger mop of hair. Turn, doesn't it? Because if he can get the return to that sort of length, he just gets Alcaraz retreating. Opens up some space in the court to exploit. Back out of something else. The pace and the depth that he generates from it. Get the feeling this is an important point in the context of this match, don't you, for Sinner? Try and wrestle the momentum. Sinner, as he did in set number one, strikes first. Sinner leads two games two to one. one, second set. First set, Alcaraz. 
no matter where you go. Melbourne, London, Paris, nothing quite like a New York night session, is there? It's just a little different. 20,000 inside Arthur Ashe. Enjoying this battle. Sinner up 2-1. Oh. Such an interesting dynamic, this, with Alcaraz having so much success when he gets a look at Sinner's second serve. So, so does Sinner continue to go for his first serve, or does he get more conservative then? And then, of course, I think that's what happened in the opening set. You get more conservative because you don't want to hit a second serve, but then your first serve is not effective enough. There we go. So perhaps just thinking... 15 all. I'm not going to be conservative. I'm going to trust that I will find my rhythm on it. Yeah, that number is significantly down as well. The first serve unreturned. Previous rounds, 44%. Today is at 25. That's the first serve unreturned. There's a lot more balls coming back as well. Oh. I mean, how do you keep the ball in the court when you hit it with that much angle and pace? How? That's where the new string technology comes into play big time. The amount of spin that these guys are able to impart on the ball is just phenomenal. Of course, the harder the swing, the more spin they impart. Thirty-all. The poly strings have been a game changer, haven't they, Nick? Big time. Albert Costa was uh, the first guy. He got his hands on a little bit of Luxalon. Roberto Berisategui was using poly star, which was similar. Gustavo Quirton came just off the Costa. Oh. You think you go back 14, even further, 13. there's a slight increase in racket head size, isn't it, as well? That had an impact. New technology and the rackets, the graphite, lighter, swinging faster. Oh. As you say, the bigger heads, more power. Oh. Yes. I guess that's the one thing for me when you want to try and compare eras. It's very difficult to do, right? The game has changed so much because of the equipment. And I almost want to say that you know, the equipment's forced the guys to become even better athletes. You have to move quicker, you have to be stronger. You've got to be able to power the ball at the end of your range. players that were ahead of their time, Martina Navratilova, fine-tuning her diet and her training, Yvonne Lendl. Ah! 
consolidation crucial for Sinner. That's what he gets. Sinner leads three games to one. Way too many trips to the Golden Arches for Ivan, were they? No. <laughs> Do head to usopen.org. And download the app as well if you haven't already. You can track the scores, the highlights are on there, all the news, great interviews you can look into as well. Our stats of the matches, that's where we get a lot of our information from. Oh, that is heavy. Fifteen All kinds of spin on that last four in from Alcaraz. It's producing some nice results thus far. Fifteen Is getting a taste of the own medicine, isn't it? He's been on the receiving end of a few of those tonight. Serve. He used it a lot on his way to the title in Miami on the hard courts earlier this year. Served and volley behind it so intelligently. Ranged, isn't he? He's got such long arms yes. on the forehand. You know, when he is able to get him stretched out, he's got the ability to use his kind of length. Rangy. Alcaraz. Pace-wise, a pretty conservative first serve, wasn't it? But just tucking him up into the body. Alcaraz not able to get a swing on it. was a Linda Ronstadt. Yes. I mean, talk about a see you, I raise you. Mm -hmm. Blue by you. That was some nice cat and mouse there. Alcaraz going right wild on the serve. Leaving that shot open. Sana taking it on. Great stuff. Oh. The margin for error off the Sinner back end there is so low, isn't it? You have got to hit that so well. I mean, 
99% of us are heading that into the front row. And it's not behind the court, it's on the uh, side of the court. <laughs> Timing has to be, it's it's perfect or nothing. Game, Alcaraz. Again, done by the slow ball. Yes. Remains just a single break. The Italian with the slight edge in the second. Let second service. And for that, surely, he has Nadal to, as the greatest role model in that regard, isn't it? Obviously, everyone's personality is nature-nurture debate. You can debate that all day long, but yeah, he has to have taken lessons from a man he's looked up to. Of course it does. It's the culture, doesn't it, within the sport, when you have somebody like Nadal. had somebody like Carlos Moya again who wasn't the most flamboyant guy out there Dal often speaks about the guys that came before him you know, the Albert Costas of the world Alex Karecha who we see on a daily basis here what a great human being he is Again, making a clever choice when he has come forwards. That's something that both of these two share, the ability to finish points off at the net and do so with considerable aplomb. They are no one-trick ponies, these guys. Great vision. Spectacular movement. That's what makes this matchup so exciting. And they can play well on different surfaces. Oh, we try to get cute there. Shake for the drop 40, shot. 30. Just going to stick it deep, but uh, got stuck in two mines. It's been part of the problem for Sinner. Certainly in the opening set, too many unforced errors. Always got to keep a tight leash on those bad boys. Game, Sina. Yeah, the young Spaniard, we're told, coming through the ranks impressively. He's actually in the quarterfinal, the boys here. Martin Landoluce, I think is how you pronounce it. Fifth seed here, look out for him. Yeah, 16. I think Kukwetja told us he's like six foot three or six foot four. 
practices with these guys. Practices with the Karenya Busta and Alcaraz. So again, he's going to be one of those young guys benefiting, practicing with top 10 players. to go and get a look at him tomorrow, Robbie. Yep. <laughs> Dull had the benefit of Carlos Moya. And he was uh, the number one player in the world. Adel just 15 years of age, hitting with him when he was back home. replicate a lot of things you can do a lot of drills but there is no substitute for practicing with top top quality players he's bringing it isn't he right now he's center up and he's elevated his level well this is center at his vintage best look at the height of that ball compared to that one. That is spreading the court beautifully. East to west. Even somebody as quick as Alcaraz can't track that down. It's a nice balanced portfolio from Sinner. Six winners each side. Oh, come on! Well, the forehand surely must have been quicker than the serve. Felt it. Again, just taking the pace out of the first delivery and yet crushing the second. Carlos Alcaraz that remains in touch in set number two. Four three it is. Finally poised the last of the quarterfinals here in New York. Sinner serving four three. When you look at these two players, Rob, in the big picture, who do you feel has more room for growth long term? I know it's a tough question. Both have so developed, but do you feel at the moment, at the stage of their careers, maybe has a little bit more room for manoeuvre? 13, love. I'd probably say Sinner. I think Alcaraz is so well developed, so it's almost like Sinner's got just just around the net. I think that's an area where he's not as proficient as Carlos. Oh. And I think the serves are both going to get better. And I think the fact that Sinner's got height working in his favour, that shot's only going to get become more potent. Interesting to see Alcaraz just taking a few steps back off the second serve return uh -huh. at the moment. A little change of play. And the other thing, Nick, is they've both got such good tennis IQs. We've seen that in the variety of shots they select, the change up of the serving pace, the angles, the feel. Again, I think mentally they're both excellent. 
incredible fighters. Of course, which leads us to the next point about Sinner's fighting abilities this year, right? Yep. Four times, I believe, he saved match point and gone on to win. Most of any player. from Carlos Alcaraz. Standing O. He has got no business making that shot. None whatsoever. Check this out. Electrifying the crowd. That's how quickly it all happens. away and the other thing to talk about these two young men is is how clutch they are especially especially Alcaraz I mean, he's 11 and 1 in deciding set tie breaks in his career the only one he lost was the Australian Open earlier this year to Berrettini otherwise he's won every one and the fact that he won his first five finals that he played in a 2 level. No intimidation. None whatsoever. Game. Alcaraz. So the Italian number one. We'll get the opportunity to square things up here in New York under the lights. 5-4. Second set. In this second set. has enabled Yannick Sinner the opportunity to serve for it. change of play isn't it from Alcaraz who suddenly 15 11. feet behind the baseline to return the second serve and the upshot of that for Sinner is that behind the second serve in this set he has been so much better significantly better versus the opening set He's just 
breathtakingly beautiful. It's the forehand with a straight elbow. Not many do, but those who do, some of the biggest forehands in the sport. Juan Martín del Potro was one of them. Federer, Nadal, Vadesco springs to mind. as well side to side as these guys too. Why not make use of the forecourt? And this again was a volley of excellent choice, wasn't it? Just the vision. It's one thing as well as having the vision, but then being able to execute it. You've got to hit it softly to that point. You've got to remember to cover the cross court pass. It's the easier one. So good at sizing up their options in an instant. Well, there was the adjustment again. That was what was working well in the first. 13. Suffocating sinner for time off the return. That was a third second serve that he's had to hit in this game to the juice court. First, third and fifth points. Got away with the first two, but not the last one. Sinner fluffs the lines at a crucial stage. It was a poor game, really, from the Italian, wasn't it? Five games off. Second set. towel from Yannick Sinner, perhaps reflective of his mood right now. When reliably informed, the roof is going to be shutting imminently. Some clement weather around. Thirty love. Momentum is an amazing thing, right? Get your hands on it. It is such a valuable commodity. Alcaraz has got the momentum at uh, the tail end of the second set. 
And he's got hold of it just in the nick of time. That body serve, the slightly slower one, has been a bit of a revelation, hasn't it? It's giving him a more appetizing plus one shot, isn't it? Yeah. He's not looking for the outright winner on the serve. He's not looking for the unreturned. He's more than happy with a two-shot combination. Check this out. Swing of the pendulum occurring right now. And Carlos Alcaraz is riding the wave. He's up 6 5. Skipping out of his chair early. Carlos Alcaraz, he senses his moment here, sending a message. from a two-set lead. Let first of us. How good Alcaraz has been this evening on break points. He has broken this guy on four occasions. On the eight break points that he's had a look at. Four of eight in that department. And has lost two matches against Sinek. He had 16 Love break 13. points and did not take one. I think Sinner looking distinctly brittle at the moment. And he might just improve his break point odds in the next point or two. A set that has done a complete 180 in the last five minutes. What do you buy for a third one? He's favoured the out wide serve for the most part this week on the ad side. shift that's going on right now. Advantage, Sino. Four unreturned serves. 
on the bounce. Just get the feeling he has narrowed his focus. It has become laser-like, given the circumstances. still shakes his head what his Jesus. charge is able to do and then recover there's still work to be done check this out boom Quick recovery good night thank you As somebody once said that's what they came to see Got his hands on his hips. Advantage, Alcaraz. What an extraordinary game this has been. Set point number four. after all the brilliance that we have seen, Nick. I mean, full yes. credit to Sinner here, though. This was a great dig, wasn't it? Off the lob. Yes, he should have made it, but he's done well here. Anything over the net, anything. And he's got a two sets to love lead. Well, I say fortune favours the brave. Advantage, Sino. Was that a chip return? We've seen that, have we, from Alcaraz? He saw it. Great technique on the volley. Reminds me so much of the second game in the second set. Six games home, second set, tiebreak. That he played a Newmark final. He was down a set, he was down one love, he was down a love 40 on serve, he was down a further three break points. Somehow he got out of that game. And thereafter, Ocker has only won one more game in that final. Senna beat him 6 1 6 1 thereafter. It was a massive plot point in the outcome of that match. One zero. Alcaraz. How's this one going to shake out? worth both with excellent tie break records this season one on Sinner 14 wins seven defeats Alcaraz 19 wins 11 defeats in the breakers they caught the line by a whisker that's what the drones in the crowds are for Two, 
one. Sina. You talk about using the full length of the court. Yep. Love the way he is down, eyes down to the level of the ball to play that drop shot. You see it better, you feel it better. of the highest quality. Alcanas. Both players showcasing all their skills. How's this elevation sensation from the Spaniard? Sampres-esque. delicately balanced could it right now you feel a breaker that Sinner has to win Robbie I mean it's again I feel like we're stating the obvious sometimes but is it a is two sets to love recoverable for Sinner I mean at his mind it's never a lost cause but we know the odds of him just goes down so much Alcaraz with the wind in the sails two sets to love up can't see Sinna coming back from a two-set to love deficit. Darren Cahill offering words of encouragement. to put into the portfolio of astonishing shots Four, from Sinner. Sinner. I mean, I'm thinking regulation volley here. None of that. He's got such dexterity in that wrist, so loose. Top of the Three. second serve. Sino. He's taken a page out of the Djokovic return book there, hasn't he? Hold oh, him deep down the middle. Suffocates his opponent. No angle to work with. Ball is on you in a flash. Tough to create any angles. Five, four. See now. Vamos. 
sí, vamos. As he done Five that. Get it into the back end, get a slightly weaker reply. And from here on in. It's just a blazing vector. And if you look very carefully, you'll see a vapor trail. Triple digit forehand, 100 miles an hour, that one. This is quality. This is tennis of the highest quality. Six, five. In the most you know. pressurized situation. This is what you want to see. Two guys playing well at the same time. Beautiful improvisation. I thought it was a good return. I'm thinking at least he's going to get a look at another shot. Not so. Center brings the heat. to the set this has been. He's made it. It's licked the line, Nick. Six off. And it couldn't have been by much. Let's take a look. Finds the gap. Oh, yeah, comfortably in. You like the play from Sinner there? Asking the question. I do. How oh, cool was this guy? He didn't have a lot of time to think about where he wanted to hit that passing shot. Or was on him in a flash. Maybe that was a good thing. Yeah. Seven, six, Alcaraz. You have to applaud the improvisation. We haven't seen him slice too many forehands tonight. Fifth set point for the 19-year-old. of the set for the Italian. How's your timing? He's brought out the Kenny Powers fastball at precisely the right moment. How good are these guys? Someone has just told him, come on, man. This has been the most intoxic intoxicating of tie breaks, isn't it? It really has. Not been able to take your eyes off it. return of his life but it might be the most valuable the last of the quarterfinals is all square in New York it's one set apiece
one sits one. Goodness me. Try and catch your breath after that, Robbie Cohn. I mean, I'm just thinking off the top of my head there. The only unforced error I can think of was the forehand on the penultimate point from Alcaraz. But for the, for the most part, the last seven, eight points in the tiebreaker were, were virtually all winners. That is quality of the tennis that they brought. Sinner had a dip, but he got out of it just in the nick of time. Four set points to save on his serve. Five, six, love 40, plus an add. Could it be deja vu all over again? As a New Yorker once said. It is. Was this clean? Did I do him a disservice? was not clean. There was a lot of hex spin on it. Got a healthy chunk of the frame. Wayne McEwen has just been out, I can tell you, and has informed both players that the roof is closing, which is exactly what's happening right in front of our eyes here. It'll take about uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, looks like Alcaraz, to me, has uh, left the court. This third set. Oh. There's one thing they haven't done actually now. She's closed the shutters, which is right at the top of the Arthur Ashe. I've done that previously when there's been some rain around, but yeah, especially when there's wind. as much ventilation as possible going through the stadium. That being natural ventilation. 30 love. Simone Magnozzi is Sinner's current coach. Took over the reins at the beginning of the year. Oh. Cross and ask for something here. First game, third set. Giallo Bianca. since he's been in front in this match. That's exactly where he finds himself at the moment.
heeft hij nog. Shape to that forearm, wasn't there? A little more height. The depth perfectly. Slightly more glum look on this man's face. I tell you what uh, Simone Vagnosi had to say once he took over the reins from Ricardo Piatti. Oh, how about that for a return? 13, 14. Oh, is that man on the bottom right of your screen? Decent player himself. Got around 130 in the rankings. Yes. Singer had read the body serve that occasion, didn't he? But he yeah, could be annoyed not to have made a play. Has used that surf so intelligently, hasn't he? Especially to this deuce side. The slower slider. Right into the body. He's got a lot of weak replies. differences between the two. I think the one thing that stands out to me is the, you know, look at the transitional game. He just he's a pro, his movement, his transition game is just more comfortable, isn't it? Mm, yeah. He just gets in tighter, he's got a more of a presence. And of course probably got a factor in that Sinner's defense isn't quite as good as his opponents, is it? He said he had a clear plan of how he wants to help Sinner reach new heights. He said Yannick doesn't have to be a, a bad copy of Nadal or Medvedev or Djokovic or anyone else. He has to be the best version of himself. He can improve the serve. The safety in the descent to the net. I think we know what that means. Technique and execution of the volley. He can improve his backhand slice. said tactically he can approve a lot as well I love 15. adding a plan B and C because when you play foxes on the circuit like Djokovic on a dull you have to be ready to change the cards <laughs> I love the language well, they've been called goats I'm not sure about foxes <laughs> Oh. 
That's something he did so well in the opening set. Just went off the centre serve. He was inside the baseline more often than not taking on the second serve. volley given what it was suddenly it around his shoelaces wasn't it yeah he has kept his composure perfectly here <laughs> perils of coming in against Alcaraz have been illustrated beautifully in that particular exchange Alcaraz almost throwing this ball at him as if to say how can you hit a volley that well stuff. 15, That's on it in a flash. He's got the ball up and down in a heartbeat. And he's got two break points. Percentage is nose dived in this third uh, set for Sinner. It is only a second game, but second service game, I should say. Still, so often these sets are decided by just one break of serve. has a taste of his own medicine there, hasn't he? How oh, bold was yes. that? 106 miles an hour. It's got to be his quickest second of the evening, isn't it? Doesn't really have a, a good kicker, doesn't he, for a second serve. So on the juice side, he goes wide or to the body. And on the ad side, I mean, this one, he has handcuffed him magnificently. I would have hit him right on the belly button. Clean either. Advantage, Sinner. I had a, a miss hit on set point, didn't he? Yeah. I think we can all lip read what Darren said there. And it wasn't, oh no. I mean, the accuracy of Sinner's first serve Sinner. has been outstanding tonight, hasn't it? And he may not have made quite as many in this set as he wanted, but when he is hitting his spots, he is finding the corners impressively. 
Something that wasn't the case 18 months ago, was it, on the first delivery? It was pretty conservative, in truth. defend against shot making like that. Yes. It's early. It's hard. And it is awfully close to the line. Let for service. Time return Sinner. from Alvarez and Sinner it is. It's in front, early stages Sinner. of this third set. One set off. Sit with what a showcase this has been. Thank you. You're on Arthur Ashe. Two men who are going to compete on these sorts of stages for years to come, one suspects. This particular contest is still very finely balanced. Is just money. Fifty no. I mean, combination of these two shots. It's in the Jagger Richards range. Technique perfect. Elbow out in front for the forehand volley. Beautiful combination. the other day and it said in sport you're either applying pressure or you're under pressure and it feels like that's very apt animando, animando for this sort of matchup oh. isn't it where these two are just going after it time after time whoever can grab the initiative will do so and boy do they both play to win hey nick mm. oh. Not hoping for the other guy to make a mistake. Something Francis Tiafo spoke about. Uh, and he was speaking to the host network after his win earlier today, and he said the difference between me now and perhaps a few years ago when I did well here is that I'm playing to win now. 
I'm not hoping the other guy is going to make mistakes and allow me to get the W. Not hoping. I'm going out there and grabbing the initiative. Not an easy thing to do. human nature is like you 40 so close to getting your eyes on the prize you, you don't want to let it go you tend to be a bit more conservative you don't want to aim for the pin and golf you want to aim for the center of the green in soccer you don't want to go and score another goal just in case you lose position and they score yeah, he's scored with that for one a few times tonight isn't he of course if he wins this match he'll actually go up to number two in the world in the live rankings as well it's also another incentive I suspect that's the last thing on his mind right now, though. His ascent has been meteoric. If you haven't been to usopen.org, do head there now. And there's plenty of shopping you can do there as well. I think Rob Koenig's been doing a bit of shopping. I'm not sure there's much left, but uh, there's good merchandise if you can get your hands on it. Really good merchandise. Mm. Yes, see it. I love it. The card was quite warm <laughs> when I pulled it out of the card machine. Was that after the moths <laughs> flew off? who's visiting from out of town. He, he had a, a long Love list of you. stuff that he had to get. And he said to me, it certainly is a commercial engine over here, isn't it? <laughs> but a concern for the camp right now. So, himself down, love 30. when he can find the back end initially off the return as well because generally he then gets a forehand off the next shot and that was struck at 107 miles an hour surely his quickest of the evening guy gets out of jail from oh, how well has he done there off a low ball to boot he's made that shot look easy and it's anything but folks 
He's going over the highest part of the net with that backhand, the least amount of court to hit into. Got to be deadly accurate. Often in the last 12 months. He's complaining about uh, his tactics there. Break points one for Alcaraz, just four of 17 at the moment. A lot of those coming in the last half an hour. Take with the ball first, right? Yep, definitely. So I think Damien's definitely got the, the not up part wrong. Doesn't take long for this guy to turn a negative into a positive, does it? And Carlos Alcaraz secures the first break in the third set, 3-2. Alcaraz needs three games to two. Yeah, that was pretty special. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if that carries just a little bit more gravitas. <laughs> year like, end, yeah. year end number well, one. Especially playing in front of his home fans, it felt like it, didn't yep. it? Beating the world number one to do so. Let for service. It's a timid second. It's only actually his third double of the match. The 
And re-break is a possibility here. See him miss at that backhand that badly yes. too often. him into the lowest percentage shot didn't it it's a shot that to be fair sin has gotten his locker but just didn't give it the height start but the best possible finish for Alcaraz to that game Alcaraz leads. he has shown Four some incredible grit Better. in this third set there's been some great tennis but for me it's it's been the gritty moments that have impressed me great mental effort who's played you know, tennis matches, tennis competitions, whether it's league, and, and you've either had set points to, to win a second set or win a first set, and you, and you don't win it. You know how disappointing that feeling is and how often it can carry over into the next set. You end up losing that easily because you're still thinking about the set points you had. Multiply that feeling by five or ten for these guys given the magnitude of the occasion here that's why I've been so impressed with Alcaraz Doesn't show it in quite the same way, does he? Sinner, emotionally. He's got plenty of his own grit. Plenty. Do it the first serve. Coming back to the party, couldn't he? Mm. for Sinner in this set is sitting at 37%. That's not great. He's just taking a little bit more time as well, isn't he? Between points at the moment, it feels. Understandable, I guess, given the scoreline, but he's had some long matches this week.
Legend. First service. commitment to the course. I'm not sure we've ever seen court coverage quite as good as this, have we? 14, 15. I mean, it really is nuclear athleticism. I mean, that's the thing about these tennis players. You've got to be able to play for four hours. You've got to be like a marathon runner, but at the same time, you've got to have the explosive movement of a sprinter. Not the lob he wanted there. Yannick Sinner remains in the rear view mirror in this third set. A look down on Arthur Ashe Stadium. This has been another treat this evening. Carlos Alcaraz with the upper hand at the moment. Been another long set, almost 50 minutes for the opening seven games of this third set. out of their seats, appreciating the raw athleticism of these guys. Two heavyweights going out of toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I mean, he's like slider man, isn't he, this guy? Relentless. Manalus. Santana. What a legend of Spanish tennis. What's any chest? At the role of the tournament director in Madrid, that's leave. That's Carlos's brother, I think. It's his brother, the older brother. Yeah. Alvaro. He was uh, the one that was telling uh, Alex Carrecha that his brother only got to sleep at 6 a.m. in the morning after the match against Cilic. By the time he had gotten back to the hotel, eaten here, had a massage, recovered. Reflect everything that was coming his way. Alcaraz for once blinking. Coached a lot of great players, as Darren Cahill mentioned Leighton Hewitt in the early days, Andre Agassi, Simona Halep more recently.
Chelsea. And a return of impeccable length. Four against all. There's the break back. Talk about finding length in the return. Sinner is not that far behind Djokovic. Certainly when he gets a look at a second serve, his ability to put it within a foot of the baseline is uncanny. Now, it's not the first time that we've seen the Spaniard have to change his shoes because the, the laces get broken because of all the sliding. And you don't need to take a timeout or anything because it's an equipment change. So if something happens to the equipment, a shirt or your pants torn or the shoes get damaged, you are allowed to change them in your own time. And not on the clock. Just taking his orthotics out of the shoe. Those are the ones that are warm. So put that slide it in there. Treads that have uh, done a fair bit of work this evening. If you look. Do you think he just has slight? I mean, this is just a just posing this one. Do you think he has slightly kind of less grip before the match starts? Because obviously, when you're sliding, you don't want grip, do you? No. no. I presume that. Yeah. Probably use him as much as you can in practice. Yeah. I kind of think it's a slightly balder sort of soul. Oh. That's the right word. far away from getting a racket on that one. 30 level. Yeah, so much strength from our craft must come from the ankles, mustn't it? The ankles, the calves. When does it recover from these positions? One thing he has done in this set is defended the second serve well. in the first set and long gone behind that second deal right now and that is the perfect game for Yannick Sinner. Sinner leads five games to four. To nudge ten. himself in front. Slender lead. One set off. He has in this third set. world 
ball striking of the richest quality. 14 15. Service toss up a little bit. Yep. Game. Well, slipped in doing many favours, but Alcaraz it is that holds on as we move slowly but surely towards another breaker, it seems. Five games all. That's it. I say slowly, there's not been a lot slowly about this match, is there, really? And again! I mean, a lot of these, these rallies have been like PlayStation tennis. Just pinging the ball back and forth, not giving up any court. Love. Actually got there with plenty of time, didn't he? But maybe just a little perturbed. The ankle a touch, maybe. Remember, he had three double faults in his opening service game of the match. He's only had four subsequently in uh, basically two hours and 55 minutes, so he's had it under control a lot more. that happens when when they're rushed and they've got no time to think they just react with these incredible shots but he saw the space and as you say Nick he guessed correctly he had so much time missed it by a country mile though from defense to offense in lightning quick fashion. Magnificent from Carlos Alcaraz. Yeah, this time it's his turn to kiss the line. What a strike. That is poetry in motion. That ball does not deviate on its path. Two break points. to move in front because Carlos Alcaraz will serve to regain the lead at 6-5. Alcaraz needs six games to five, third set. Once it's off. In the quarterfinals, this is a case of last, but definitely not least, isn't it? In terms of quality. 
Akras serving for the third. Feels like he's upped it again, doesn't it? It really does, Nick. There's no question he was looking a little flat at the start of the set after having the five set points in the previous one. He's picked himself up beautifully. That is a big time play on a big time point. It's not a bad return, but the fact he's taking it early, it's just taking his own time away, and you get no time to recover. A shot taking a foot inside the baseline here. With plenty of safety built in. Got a piece of the line. Thirty-old. Made the most of his luck on the return here, didn't he? This was Just in case if anything will do. That was not. Did he take his racket away there. That looked like it. Certainly from that angle. And this time he got the return a little more central. 13 footy. Taking the wide service stance again. Mesmerizing and magnificent. Yes. How's the simplicity of this point? The execution. Oh. Given the circumstances, fearless. <laughs> but in keeping with the contest, back comes Sinna. Advantage, Sinna. I mean, to win a point against each other, they've either got to hit it within an inch of the line or on it. Otherwise, you're getting no love from the other guy. Yeah, this is tennis in the red zone, isn't it? It's fun to watch. Once again. Yes. It's a serve. It catches a piece of the line. The line it will skid, won't it as well here? Oh. 
Tech. Ahí convencido, arriba. Even Darren Cahill is laughing at the quality of which we're witnessing here. Mind blowing. stuck around Six because this has been a show Direct. remarkably Alcaraz is not able to shut the gates and again full credit to the Italian not like it was handed it to him was it anything but anything but Nick thank you a set 73 minutes old already doesn't he? His reaction after the miss by a, could only be of an inch. One of dejection. He's going to be good when he's older, this kid. <laughs> oh, man. 19 years of age. they met Two, zero. for the very zero. first time when Carlos was just 15. Yannick was 17 at the time. Everybody was speaking about him. Not too many people knew about Alcaraz. They played at a challenger in Valina. Senna was up three love in the deciding set. Was six games on the bounce to this young 15-year-old. He was devastated. It was Ricardo Piatti who told us the story. And he said Three, to Sina, to I'm glad you lost. And I'm glad you lost to somebody younger than you. Because it's hurt you a lot more than if you'd lost to a more experienced player. Next time you've got somebody down, three love, you make sure you stand on their throats. Put the match to bed. Valuable lesson learnt. First time him and Alcaraz met in a match. First of this. Yeah. Yeah. Alcaraz just covering Four, the wide zero. serve there, wasn't he? because it actually wasn't that close to the line, but again, the pace. It's 
washing him. Sizable advantage for the Italian. Always a dangerous approach shot, the inside in forehand. The dynamic movement of Sinner. So impressive. That'll get you out of your seat. His way. Six, zero. A couple of forehands that have zero. got away from him. And this tiebreak has been distinctly less competitive than the first one. We saw this earlier today, didn't we, with uh, Francis Tiafo. <laughs> what a tiebreak he played against Andre Rublev. Full of set points. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Takes a two sets to one lead. He's got his eyes on the prize of a place in the last four in New York. Sinner leads two sets to one. Just as we saw in the second set tiebreak earlier today with the American Francis TFO shutting out Rublev 7-0. Yannick Senna decides to replicate that feat. That was clean. You see a big drop off in the first serve points. One foul caress, just 48. Of course, most notably when serving for a two sets to one lead. You just wonder how much mental scoring is going on there. He must be thinking, I should have been off here. Done and dusted in straight sets. Five set points in the second set. Serve for the third. And I'm the one who's two sets to one down. Those hand skills are a joke. Boy, he's attacked the volley. I'll get us to serve. Kranz's defeats at the Majors this year. Of course, Tussiner at Wimbledon. Zverev beat him at the French in the quarters. Berrettini got him in Melbourne, you remember, in a final set breaker.
Love Fotic. Three early break points then. Serve of the day. Fifteen footed. Just shy, in fact. New balls, please. And the approach and was one of power and purchase. You might not think of Sinner as a go, it comes in a lot, but I could tell you, coming into this match, he'd come in almost a hundred times throughout the course of the tournament, and he'd won 80% of those forays forward. It's becoming more and more proficient in the full court. And this evening, he's coming 50 times alone. Nick just pointed that out to me. few people in Spain and Italy just waking up at seven o'clock in the morning and they're going to be able to enjoy the denouement of this one over their morning coffee. <laughs> Perfect timing, Rob. Absolutely. Oh! Fifteen, thirteen. So I'm asking the question, how much that miss by? Bit of depth, isn't there, on the second delivery? Now Alcaraz. Not too much of an opportunity to take it on.
14, that's it. Just one first serve in the game for Sinner. Somewhat of a feature at the start of sets, hasn't it? It's missing a lot of first serves. Dejected look on the face of the Spaniard. Something we're not accustomed to seeing. Again, Some crushing forehands. As Alcaraz is flawed again. But, uh, no harm done. hold of a point and there's no mood to let it go does he this is the fall a little on the first serve, isn't he? Just of late, just taking it on a little more aggressively. Those off-pace serves that we saw for a while seem to have dissipated. Thirty-eleven. Second serve, look at the pace on that one hundred and eight. Forty eleven. Beat center for pace. That's the body language there from Sana. 
Even though he was uh, 40 love down, shaking his racket. Loving the battle. It's changed the expression on the Alcaraz camp all on his own. These are two camps that know each other well. 40, that's it. I mentioned the first time they played when Alcaraz was just 15, Sinner was 17. They practice regularly together at tournaments. I mean, remember that point that went viral on social media? Where was that, Nick? Was that at Montreal? Montreal. I feel like we've had that on replay a few times this <laughs> evening. <laughs> and we're all the better for it, aren't we? Absolutely well said. I mean, this guy's just taken his forehand yes. so early at the moment. He's just rushing Alcaraz, forcing him into parts of the court. Pressure he's putting on. It's relentless. Big couple of points coming up here. And back to the slow ball. And actually got us again a slightly shorter reply because of it. Advantage Alcaraz. his account in the fourth set this Carlos Alcaraz he's got some catching up to do though 2-1 two, one. Two, well the most prolific rivalry of all time on the men's side of course has come in recent times Nadal and Djokovic has met 59 times incredibly one suspects these two are going to have a fair few that go do well to reach that number, but if the evidence of this evening is anything to go by, I look forward to these two carrying this rivalry going forwards. If you discount their challenger that they played in Alicante, and they were both youngsters, this is episode number four. easily. Three meetings of these two guys. Of course, the first one was won by Alcaraz and Paris Bercy at the end of last year. But it's Sinner who has got the better of Alcaraz in recent times. Beat him at Wimbledon and beat him at the final in Umog just a couple of weeks ago. 2 1 Sinner.
That's Hill. Return serves have been a real premium, haven't they? They've been very valuable this evening. That was an important one. about this guy's steely determination. Never gets too fired up this center, never gets down on himself. His emotional balance is exceptional. Oh. mid-court from Sinner. And that was that. Alcaraz just takes control of the point. Thanks for coming. That's how good it has to be. second serve to have quite as much width and turn to it. I'm not sure he did. For credit to Sinner. I think that's the one you've got to be careful of. Sinner doesn't have a naturally good kick serve down the middle there. fourth ace of the match and we consider we're almost four hours in Center. Just accepts it. Next point. Nothing he can do about it. Advantage, sit down. Let 
Beck hold. Another hurdle overcome for Yannick Sinner. Sinner leads three games to one, fourth set. Thursday morning in New York. And if you haven't done so already, do head to usopen.org. Follow us on all the social channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube as well. Plenty of highlights on YouTube, great interviews to take a look at. And candid ones as well, particularly Francis TFO this week's opened up nicely. And his journey, well worth a watch. He awaits the winner of this one. I'm wondering how Tiafo has gone against these two guys. Well, in the past, he's got a losing record against Sinner. Sinner leads that head to head two to one. And, uh, Tiafo won the last one they played. End of last year in Vienna, indoors in a hard court. 30 love. Alcaraz comes through. And Tiafo's got. Uh, a 1 0 head to head record against the Spaniard. Beat him last year on the clay in Barcelona. Oh. Friday evening that will be the second semi final. Ricocheting everywhere, wasn't it? 40 left. The irony was this man didn't even have to leave his seat to get it. <laughs> Left his friend hanging there with the fist bump, though. Shots that these guys have executed to within an inch of the line or on the line is astounding. Sinner continues to push the boundaries on the forehand. In the mid 80s, the average ground stroke speed for him in this set, crushing it. It's the Italian though that has a two sets to one lead and a break. Four sets and two sets to one. Who will be staying in New York? Three two. comes again. 
Opportunity here at Love 30. to the medal. The last two forehands that Alcaraz struck were both over a hundred miles an hour. Thank you. As we head into hour number five, Alcaraz with three break points. going nowhere not for the first time either this evening it's that return that pays dividends what a game what a match What time do they serve breakfast? Love <laughs> 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 15. Once again, it won't bother Sinner. He's just right back at it. Puts on the hard hat, back to work. keep asking myself the question. Love fatigue. Who is better mentally out of these two? Mm. Or are they just different? There's <laughs> nothing in it, right? Mm. I mean, what's even more remarkable is we've played... <laughs> 292 points. Yeah. 146 each. to just keep raising the bar. Love 40. I mean, for Sinner to respond in the manner he has here. How clever was this? With a little slip, but... And the angle he got made the difference, didn't it? Just gave Alcaraz a slightly more uncomfortable run. Brian Johnson's lyrics could not be more fitting. 
first song he ever wrote for ACDC. Let's keep the house rocking. 50 love. wasn't the cleanest return. threatening the second he's actually come up with a nice answer there isn't he encouragement from his corner the closer bond those two have formed in their time together Sites. Got him. Cena leads five games to three. Fourth and set. Is he going to be on an early flight back to Spain? room now for Alcaraz. Oh. Only two matches have been longer than the men's draw than this one. match of the tournament to involve to another Italian, Lorenzo Mazzetti, defeating David Goffin in four hours, 35 minutes. The other one, Tommy Paul against Casper Ruud. The rude poor match was four hours, 23 minutes. Fourteen minutes shy of that one. A hold for Alcaraz, a quick one to boot. He'll sit down and contemplate. He knows when he gets up from his chair, he has to break to prolong his stay in New York. You won't get there for free. 
know there's been anything but a free ride for either of these guys. They are the most tenacious competitors. You add to that their physical gifts. Yeah, we anticipated a good one this evening, didn't we? I'm not sure we anticipated it to be quite as good as this. Sustained quality. Sinner to try and finish the job. A promising start. His forehand has been Please, ladies and gentlemen, for both players, stay quiet during the points. Thank you. He has not been scared to come in this evening either. His forays forward have been outstanding. I can tell you that Sin has been to the net 51 times in this match. by a seventh ace. And he was on the back foot, was Alcaraz. Hustled the return back into play. And gets his reward. Thank you. And he broke the Alcaraz serve. The Sinner serve, excuse me. Yes. <sighs> that is beyond special. as he done that this evening as well. Big time players making big time plays and big time points. Four hours and 15 minutes. One of the highest level of tennis you could wish to watch. Sinner at match point.
Served beautifully on the break points, and goodness me, does he need it again now? He's consistently landed the first serve tight to the lines in these situations tonight. to be another twist in the tail. Can you imagine the irony? Can you imagine Yannick Sinner, the man who has saved more match points than any and gone on to win this year? Four times he's done it. Alcaraz do the unthinkable. Five games all. Four. I think that not says it all. It is game on again. And I can tell you that Alcaraz this year two occasions has saved match points and gone on to win did it at Roland Garros remember second round against Albert Ramos Vignolas saved one there did it in the semi-finals of Barcelona against Alex de Menor. No. He went on to win that tournament. Remember, played the semis in the morning, won the finals that same afternoon. Sinner did his best to make it difficult, but he was in so quickly as he so often is. Give himself the best possible chance. Alcaraz leads six games to five. Fourth Something set. in the water this year, isn't there, Robbie? Here? Sina leads two sets to one. <laughs> Big shows often hit Broadway, don't they? But goodness me, they've hit Queens hard and fast this week. Sinner, 5-6. Please. Oh! And once again, it's to the two uh, side, okay. isn't it? Just can't decide where he wants to aim that serve. For me, he's got to go wide to the forehand. And we saw actually in the first set when he started to lose his grip, it happened quickly, didn't it? Feels like a long time ago. Fifth 
Martino. Just on a pretty significant pivot, hasn't it? Alcaraz two points away from a fifth. Turn of events. Alcaraz with set points. Oh. Please. moves at two o'clock in the morning. Tell you what, there's going to be a few people turning up for work who might need an extra coffee tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, this has just been incredible. And I mean, what's he telling himself right now? I mean, he's only got one choice to try and stay positive, hasn't he? But so easy from here. Should be walking off the court into the locker room now, shouldn't he? Game set match yep. into the semi finals. Require some effort to try and recover this situation. Never forget Andy Murray talking about when he went off. Do you remember at the start of the fifth when he won his first major here and he looked himself in the mirror? Told himself it was his time. Novak Djokovic has given himself a couple of stern talkings to as well. Set number four, let's have a look at some of the numbers. What's jumping out here? I guess things changed pretty drastically, didn't they, in the last ten minutes? Yeah, the only number you need to know is that Yannick Sinner had a match point at 5-4 on his own serve unable to capitalize on it and as a result not going the distance much better on the break points one by Alcaraz three or four remember he went through that passage in the match where he was uh, zero for nine
Oh. Oh. A bit of extra bite to that serve, wasn't there? Kicking up on Sinner. Execution was admirable. Gets himself out in front at the start of the fifth. Physically, uh, does it come into the play here? I mean, I don't feel like either guy really looks as they're struggling. Did, do you? Do you see that at all? I, I don't, Nick. And a choking post. The yump cam, as is Alcaraz. Third successive night on the men's side of things. We've had a five setter. is potentially a moment, doesn't he? With his man down. Low start in the fifth set against Haveshka in the previous round. He was down 3 1 in a heartbeat. He ended up winning five straight games, did Sinner. Not sure he'll be allowed that luxury against Alcaraz. He just got caught, didn't he? Didn't expect Sinner to produce something like he did from a defensive standpoint. 13, 13.
just leaning back a fraction off that one. 30 on. This foreign has been rock solid for the most part. That's it. First serve percentage for the match is less than impressive. Just on the 50% mark. Serve. And uh, just you know, wrestling it back into play, but Sina does not hesitate, does he? Anything short. Italian number one. It's a big hold. One game on. Five or seven. wasn't it? Kept from Alcaraz under pressure there. And it has to be that good, doesn't it? You drop it short. You're toast. Oh. And he has gone to the body serve. Consistently tonight as Alcaraz. It was a missed time return, but it proved to be a useful one for the Italian. Didn't he rob as well off this ball? Yeah, you're spot on, Nick. 
A little bit too much feed on that backhand drop shot. Kind of like my driver on a not so good day. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. was a simple one. This is the problem when you go cross court. Just leave yourself exposed. I love the fact that the fans out of their seats to applaud every effort from these guys, and rightly so. It's been Herculean from both of them. A swift hold. For the 19-year-old, the man from Murcia is back in front. Alcaraz needs two games to one. one set. In this fifth set. Yeah, the uh, time of a famous show. In the States called the Late Late Show, don't they? Well, this is uh, right on track. Very much in keeping with that. And I believe we're. Uh, to pass the longest match of the tournament now, Rob. Yeah, we have four hours, 35 minutes. Was Mazzetti Goffin? We're now four hours and 44 minutes into this one. And hey, it's a South African that hosts the Late Late Show. It is. He was here yesterday, wasn't he? Certainly was. Trevor Noah loves his tennis. Of course, uh, participated in the match in Africa. 15 left. He was... Uh, there in Cape Town with uh, Rafa and Roger. And Roger had his uh, charity fundraising event, his annual one, down in Cape Town. Took a crash course in tennis for two months at uh, TN. Yeah. Oh, wow. $50. Yeah, that was perfection. That's a return. We've seen him strike a few times tonight. Sinner just leaving a little bit of the court exposed and he's been punished for it. Congratulations, Bolo Views, warming Mr. Sinner. Well, I think that just went out to the crowd, didn't it? It was a gentle sort of tap down into the ground, but I can only assume it went up into the crowd. Is that what he got the warning for? No reaction from Sinner afterwards. Surely not. Oh, come on. He's trying to hit that against the backboard ever so gently. Seems a little harsh, doesn't it? Yeah. At this stage of the match. There's not much that perturbs Yannick Sinner, though, is there? And he's a man who's had a strong resolve. Sensational half folly. Oh, well, has he done to cushion that particular shot? Two games off, final set. We're getting handed a lot of notes, Robbie. I think we're breaking a fair few records this evening. 
Okay, we're starting to delve into some of the longest matches ever at a major. Exceptional core coverage from Sinner. And a little move just at the last minute to cover the line. Okay, what do we got here? It's what we have. And it's taken this man to break point. Three of them. The first of the set. of Carlos Alcaraz and it's given Yannick Sinner first blood in the decider the impetus with the Italian 3-2 some have even brought their canine friends were broken all over the show in week one uh, we've just broken a new one in week two we may have a fair while to go electric still inside Arthur Ashe those that have stayed have witnessed something special Folly. The stick, the ability to keep it low. That's what's been so great about this contest, Nick. Both players showcasing their full array of skills. Alcaraz has been in 35 times. Sinner, 61.
for quite a while, Robbie. We sat in these Here chairs and felt for almost years urging players to come forward more, didn't we? Yes. Wondering why it wasn't happening. And yet this seemingly this generation, this new generation of coming through are very keen and to, to make that happen. Yeah, I think they realise all their, all their counterparts and it just moves so well. You have to be able to finish the points off at the net. Oh, he clubbed it. 13, we had Juan Martin Del Potro in the house a little earlier this evening. He would have enjoyed that forehand. Yeah, I'm not sure Juan Martin's lasted the distance, has he? <laughs> oh. Don't forget, he went five sets here to win the title back in 2009 Four against teams. none other than Roger Federer. and he used the slice back in a whole lot. It's not really something he dips into very often. Cruz getting a little more bite on his one. Yeah, Simone, his coach, mentioned that's a shot that he's going to have to continue to work on, evolve. Get better at hitting that backhand slice. June time. Center. And was exactly how Alcaraz started this match. Alcaraz. Jumped all over it. Twenty fourth break point of the evening for the Spaniard. Italian number one. 
And we're at parity again. Three games on. Final set. In a lot of good Grand Slam matches this year, Robbie, but I'm not sure I'm none better than this. I mean, the quality has been off the charts. 15 love. It's been the odd lapse in concentration, but it hasn't lasted long. And it's just been raining down winners from all areas of the court forehands, backhands, volleys. I mean, the athleticism of these two. Once again, the pendulum swings. Sun has had some big body blows. Kiana could be so annoyed that he got broken there from being 40-15 up in the game. Looking for a comfortable hold. Edge ever closer to the finishing line, but no. Juice on the forehand. Had to be good taking it up the line from 14, there. It most certainly was. Insatiable. Carlos Alcaraz speed. regains the lead in the fifth. He's up 4 3. More well, concerns about where men's tennis was heading Thank post you. the big four. You can put those concerns to one side. Please, ladies and gentlemen, five for hours and three players, minutes, and we're still going strong. And between first and second serve, please. Thank you. Damien Dumasois demanding some calm. So that knows the danger of actually going back and cross there, doesn't he? Because Alcaraz is so quick to get his forehand into play. Knows it has to have some good length. Thank 
Sin has played four or five setters here at the US Open. He's only lost one. And that was the first one he played actually against Karen Hashinov back in 2020. He's won his last three. Of course, two have been this year. Alcaraz. Five setters at the US Sergio. Open. It's a perfect 3 0. serve into the slot it's caused him a bit of trouble Alcaraz with a very clean return she doesn't have enough swing on it does it and again because of where he's serving it from yep it's just a little too much space up the line Well, right here, you've got to call 911 because Yannick Sinner has got out of jail. He has stolen that point from the Spaniard. No business winning it. These game points, Nick. Yes. Previous game. Said I had 40 15 on the serve, got broken. That's another cheap point played. Five hours and seven minutes. hit the target. Sinner just four of 12, second serve points one in this fifth set. Now Coraz is coming from him. Let first service. this time. Yes. And Nick and I have got a list of the longest matches played here at the US Open. Top of the pops there is Edberg Chang, 92 semi-final, five hours, 26 minutes. We're, tra we're tracking that, aren't we? Oh yeah. Well and truly. sublime after five hours he's moving like he was in the opening game of this match combination of foot speed and anticipation use of the left hand to sneak that by center 
the break point. Oh. Please. Another game where Sinners had game points to close it out. He doesn't, and he gets broken. Alcaraz lead five games. The majority of the Arthur Rash crowd are on their feet. What a treat this has been. What an escape act this would be. Serving for a place in the last four. shots every single one of them after five hours and 11 minutes struck by their life depended on it this is now officially the second longest u.s open match in history You've got to admire Yannick Sinner. He still believes, Nick. The way these two have carried themselves in this contest has been a credit to each other. not had many aces in this match but none might be more important than that one just his fourth of the evening slash morning And he's done so well off the return there, isn't he? I mean, at full stretch, he's tattooed it to the baseline. Almost an hour after Yannick Sinner held a match point. Carlos Alcaraz has one of his own. Carlos Alcaraz. Three sets to two. 
books his ticket six, three, to the last four six, seven, in the six, most seven, remarkable seven, five, fashion. Six, three. A night that no one will ever forget, surely, here in New York. Ends with the warmest of embraces. That was special. The 19-year-old prevails in the second longest match in US Open history. Saving a match point along the way. It's one that's going to hurt for Sinner. My, oh my, what heart he showed. That was a work of art. Showcasing his full palette, as did this young man. In the words of the great Ed Moses, losing is not the end. On the contrary, it's the beginning of the inner dialogue upon which progress depends. And for Sinner, he'll hopefully take it as feedback and not failure. <laughs>